Good morning, everybody. We apologize for the slight delay and thank you for your patience. Welcome to day four of week two of A Life Connects, our very first virtual only event brought to you exclusively by A Life Group. This morning, we are very glad to welcome back a special guest who we had on last week, who proved to be one of our most popular sessions of the entire week. Dr. Daniel Tan, chiropractor and founder of the Aligned Clinic, is back with us to talk about good spinal health and today, especially how to prevent back pain. Now, I know for those of us, all of us, I'm sure, who have been working from home during this MCO period at makeshift desks, uncomfortable chairs, perhaps, or otherwise unusual positions, I think we're all getting a bit of strain in, the, in, in our lower back areas. I know I certainly am. So we are very much looking forward to welcoming Daniel back this morning. Dr. Daniel, I should say, this morning, he's going to talk to us about how to relieve back pain and how to prevent a little bit of, of, of ache and so on. So without further ado, please help me welcome. Dr. Daniel, good morning. Hello, good morning. Thank you for joining us again. Welcome back. Yeah, it's good to see you again. Likewise. How have you been? How's the last week been for you? Uh, not too bad. I've been pretty productive. I've uh, been doing good. quite a lot. Using it to rest my soul and do some work. It's all pretty good. I yeah. feel that. I feel that. Good stuff. <laughs> Uh, so, so, and, and thank you again for, for joining us. Like your, your session last week, Daniel, proved really, really popular with a lot of people. Uh, we had a great viewership, a lot of comments, a lot of questions, a lot of people really, I think, waking up to the importance of good spinal health, good posture. And even for me, I learned how important the pelvis was, which I, was, uh, which I wasn't expecting to. So that was great. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about what you've come back to talk to us about. What are you focusing on today? Well, actually today, I think that you know, like one of the good things that we can do is to have a lot of Q&A session because I realized that there was actually quite a lot of people who wanted to know more about like lower back pain and what, what can I help them with it. So I think the Q&A session, we can, we can put more emphasis in that, but um, mainly what I want to share, it's about lower back pain, you know, like uh, all this false perception of lower back pain, why people have lower back pain, how common is it, and et cetera. What are the symptoms so that will be the kind of thing that i would like to share with everyone today all right fantastic well good so you heard you heard the, you heard the good doctor guys please get your comments in down below we're going to make this a, quite an interactive session with some q a so yeah. if you have any questions or um or you you'd like some free advice make the use of it make the use of it we've got we've got dr daniel here with us for the next hour so let's get as much value from him as we can um and, and yeah, if you have any burning questions or, or, or there's something you want to clear up, like you just said, there's a lot of maybe misconceptions or misunderstanding about, about lower back pain and where it might derive from elsewhere in the body because we learned last week just how interconnected the whole, uh, the whole body system is, I suppose. So that'll be very, very interesting. So people, please get your comments in down below. Um, but let's, let's start with you, Dr. Daniel. What, what, would, what would you like to start us with this morning? Okay. Um... So the reason why I choose to talk about lower back pain, uh, so the first thing that I would like to share, and uh, today I'm not going to go too much about presentation and slides, um, though, you know, later I might be able to show you guys, I actually brought a spine model, so then I'll be able to give you guys an idea of, you know, like what triggers lower back pain. But um, mm. so with lower back pain, a lot of people that always, you know, like come to my clinic, a lot of patients, um, First question that they will ask me is that, or the, the thing that they will tell me is that they actually feel that they have some back pain at the lower back and they think that it's muscle, it's muscular. So uh, before all this start, we just have to clarif clarify something. Um, usually if it's a muscle, muscle related pain, it will only stay there for a few days. And if you or who, whoever who's experiencing this kind of discomfort at the moment that have back pain for there for more than a few days and it lingers around and especially it comes and goes. So you sort of feel sore in this moment and then the next moment you feel good again. That usually it's not a typical muscle problem and that's usually a nerve problem. It's what we call as a nerve pain. That's what yeah, we, we have yeah. to, to begin with. I think everyone need to have this clear concept before we start because what, what I'm going to mainly talk about today is what is nerve pain and what causes nerve pain? Okay, cool. It sounds a little more sinister than muscle pain. So something we should be paying more particular attention to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, um, 
Hold on, yeah. Let me just try to get some some slides here. Okay. Anyway. Okay. So just wanna just wanna ask. Um, just wanna know if there is anyone who have any problem, you know, with lower back and or whatsoever. Feel free to drop a question. Um, I'll try to reply yeah. as much as I can. <laughs> Oh, I mean, I still, I, I certainly do, but I, I think I think we we covered mine a little bit last week, so I won't I won't uh, I won't hijack the audience uh, the good audience's time with you. So, we, I think we we touched on mine last week because I think mine mine has come about as a result of generally bad posture. I have to admit, but also when I started when I first started weight training, I put a lot of emphasis on my upper body rather than lower, and then over time, my chest started to hunch forward, my, my shoulders were drawn out was hunched over naturally and so and to uh, to accommodate for that my spine was i think flexing um in the wrong direction you might say so it was carrying a lot of weight so now i just uh, but i started doing i started doing a few more exercises a few more core exercises and and reluctantly got into doing legs eventually you know no one likes doing legs everyone wants to skip leg day so it's a bit better now than it used to be and i'm a, I'm a lot more conscious of of my posture when i stand or, or even when i sit for that <clears throat> That matter so um yeah so but i i, I experienced it for a while um and i know a lot of people do even at a young age it seems to be but i think we again we touched on this last week i think it's the um you know we, we're spending so much more time sitting down at desks and hunched over our phones looking down at them so i think over time these problems just start compounding and putting putting pressure on the um on the vertebra am i right down the bottom of your back mm, that's that's correct yeah. mm. So I think that you know, actively as a as a person who wants to prevent lower back pain, there is a couple of ways that we can do it. But you know, some of the most common thing that we heard is from exercises. Try to do mm. general. Try to do more exercises that you know activates the muscle at the lower back. So you know, even even just general exercises from leg days, for example, just squats, back extension. Um, hamstring curl, all these exercises, especially that exercises which works on the back part of the muscle, the posterior part of the muscle, like the glutes, the hamstrings, the lower part of the erectus spinae, those exercises is great. And mm. we, we also, from last week, we also knew that from sitting in a good position, you know, like getting the back all the way supported when you're sitting at the sofa or a chair, yeah. try, try to avoid having a lot of space at the lower back, just try to get supported. <laughs> We also knew that that's very important. Um, I think we also covered that, you know, when you're sitting, try not to spend a long time sitting. Um, try mm -hmm. to generally just walk around actively if you can. Every half an hour, stand up and walk around. That's also something that we knew. So um, what, we're gonna what we're gonna talk about today is adjustment, like chiropractic adjustment. Like what are the false mm -hmm. misconceptions that people have, how important it is, okay? <clears throat> so- yeah, I think so. Okay, I'm just gonna get a spine model if you don't mind. By all means, by all means, yeah, please, go. Um, okay, and thank you guys, so Forrest and Josephine, thank you for your questions so far, some very good questions there, which we will put to the good doctor in just a second, uh, once he's shown us this fancy spinal model he has. Okay. Let me uh, tell you, what, let me, I'll put you full screen, Daniel, so the audience can see you, see your model in all of its glory. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, this is a spinal model, uh, just to, Give you guys a better perspective so that's the front part of the spinal model so this is the pelvis that's the back part so what we're going to focus today is to look into each each and every segment and the importance of it so if you look uh, look closely you'll be able to see that our spine is actually made up of different vertebras like all different vertebras each and every one of them and you can see that each vertebra is connected by a disc Okay, and with the disc connected, you can see that at the back part, you'll be able to see this yellow structure. So these are what we know as nerve roots, right? So the nerve roots comes up from these holes here, this foramina, and it's actually, there is actually a spinal cord inside. So the top part of the spine, this is the brain, right? So the brain, it descends with the spinal cord, and you can see that the nerve comes up the spinal cord comes all the way down here and the nerve root comes up from the side. So what does the nerves do is that it actually controls all of our movement, our entire body's function. So 
they are actually very important. Say, for example, if you have one of the nerve root that is affected, that is damaged, some part of your body wouldn't function normal. Say, if the nerve that is affected at the neck, there is a problem there, the whole limb will be affected. It could. So, which means if you do have last last round we covered uh, if anyone who follows me um, on the last week so last round we covered that if you have a pelvis issue if the nerve is affected the whole leg can be affected even the functions of your bowel movement everything could be affected right so that's why we heard a lot um, about people who get into an accident if they do have any lower back issues sometimes the bowel movement the bowel control get affected they can't digest properly, a lot of you know, internal organ issues will be affected. So that's what we know. And the reason why I want to talk about this is how does chiropractic helps with lower back pain or how important it is. So we understand that a good posture, would, uh, it's important to prevent the problem. Exercise is important to prevent the problem. So what exactly is the problem like how do we injure ourselves <clears throat> see if if we're sitting in a bad position for a long period of time or we are not strong enough at the back part of the at the spine like the muscle is not developed enough sometimes the impact is strong enough to move the bone so if that's a if that's a symmetry position some bone can be shifted just like the x-ray that we showed everyone last week i think some of you that follows you might still remember the pelvis can be in a bad shape. So what does, what does chiropractic do is to bring the bone back to the right position. So we analyze how the bone has shifted in that manner and we basically try to correct it by bringing the bone back to a normal and functioning position. So is, is everyone still, still with me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I am, I'm following. <laughs> okay, but the question is how often this can happen? So the, the thing about a bone that is misaligned is that it actually happened more common than you, you thought it would be. Surely the, the picture that I showed you guys last, last time, um, so for example, let me just try to find the slides again. Um, so, hold on here, just give me a minute. Uh, yeah. So I, I think um, last week, one thing we touched on was how with sometimes with many other types of injuries, say if it's a shoulder or an elbow or whatever, you you know, we wait until or you know, we only realize there's a real problem when it's when the joint there is, is like really dislocated, you know, like 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 visibly so sometimes. Whereas with the back, it's a lot more delicate in in some respect in that like a bone can shift and you might not realize that it has shifted for a long period and then and only after a while the the real discomfort happens it's not it's not like because if you're if your back dislocates to the same extent as a shoulder then you're in serious trouble but it can it can dislocate ever so slightly and just rub and you know be in the wrong position over a longer period of time before it starts to get really bad right i think find it quick now there we go We have some. We have a couple of questions coming in, right? So. Yeah, we've got. Yeah, uh, Forrest is asking some brilliant questions about uh, about treatment and what have you. Josephine is keen to understand what she can do for her husband during MCO. Um, so we can. We'll make time in a second to get around to the first batch of questions, if you like. Uh, once you sh once you've shown us what you've got to show us. I, I think we can probably answer the question while I'm trying to look for these these slides here. Okay. Okay. Let's start with a couple. And so, uh, firstly, let's start with um, with with Forrest. And this is this is almost a kind of I guess a two. There are two similar-ish looking questions. So the first one being, uh, what are your thoughts about current technologies like biomechanic assessments that help to analyze posture issues? Mm. And the um, reason I, the reason I say there's a the, the reason I say it, there are two similar questions is because they both refer to technology. The first one is 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 about assessment. And the second is about your thoughts on current technology to minimize back pain. So I guess, what are your thoughts on technology to, in, in terms of ass firstly assessment and secondly treatment? Okay. Um, 
I, that's actually a pretty good question, and it's actually a very in-depth question. Uh, let's try to answer for us, uh, or Vince. Okay, so when we talk about assessment um, and treatment of back problem, um, I think in the, right now in in the healthcare uh, provider or in the market, what we understand is that there is a couple of different professions that would like to offer help and treatment for this. We know that physiotherapists they they, they claim that or um, they actually do provide you know treatments that can help with lower back pain if you go to uh, if you go to uh, a medical doctor they probably give you painkillers you know if you go to tita sensei they'll do some sort of manipulation there is actually all sorts of treatment out there or the uh, or solutions that or options that provide to many people out there but what's the difference and what's my thought okay so this is this is just my personal thoughts um, I'm not choosing sides or any anything whatsoever. I'm just trying to be very neutral here. So <clears throat> I myself, I'm a big fan of exercise. I'm clearly into sports. The thing about exercises to help with lower back pain is that it's almost impossible to do that. So this is the reason why. When you have your bone that is off position, so let's use a shoulder as an example, okay? So today um, in a sports injury, you fell down, for example, and then you hit your shoulder and your shoulder dislocated, okay? So now you have one of your shoulder hanging. And let's, let's, let's just say that the, the shoulder is not fully dislocated, it's just partially, that's what we call as a subluxation. It just goes off position and ever since then you start to experience some sort of pain and when you move your shoulder, you just have a lot of you know cavitation and noises. <clears throat> so if you try to exercise and you try to do a lot of like chest press and whatever to, to want to bring the bone back to the position to improve and reduce pain, it's impossible. Because right now it's, the bone is physically off. The structure is off. You get what I mean? So you won't be able to try, if someone who dislocated the shoulder before you understand, then you won't be able to try to do movement on the shoulder on its own to bring the bone back. Mm. Somehow you have to use um, you know, like you have to get someone's help to physically assist you to bring the bone back to the right position. If it makes sense. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah and, and a lot of people say that, oh, massages actually help. Then they try to massage it. If your bone is dislocated, your muscle will definitely go into spasm because that swelling would then compress on the nerve around it, causing a natural reaction for the muscle to go into spasm. So if you try to rub on the spasm, Temporarily, you feel better, but in the end, the spasm is going to come back again because it's a self-protecting mechanism. Yeah, so the I only see. way for you to remove the pain or the cause of, or the root of the pain is to get the bone back to the right alignment once and for all. So go back to the question, um, will the biomechanic assessment help with the current issues? Yes, you'll be able to trace back. So when we talk about biomechanic assessment, and uh, that's... Uh, in many ways, some actually do it, you know, by judging the, the way that people walk. Some actually use a machine, some, some actually use uh, some graph to plot and see how um, the body is misaligned in one side and the other side. In our way, it's actually quite similar. The way that we do it is from x-ray. So from the x-ray, we'll be able to know the position of the bone. So in a way, we'll be able to assess the mechanics, how the bone is functioning and how the bone position is. So. Yes, it does. It is very important to have biomechanic assessment. Mm. Okay. Is it clear yeah. now? It's quite. I think. That, yeah. 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 No. No. That makes that makes that makes perfect sense. You mm -hmm. need to understand the body is working in tandem with itself, uh, so that you don't force it into places it doesn't want to be in. Mm -hmm. And and what about what about the technology technology to treat or minimize back pain? So cryotherapy or the Theragun, which the Theragun is like the it looks like a new, it looks like a drill right and it's just like it's with it's got the um the rubber extension on the end which which literally drills into you it looks wonderful i really want to get hold of one to be honest it looks a lot of fun yeah 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 i, I do think that that's a good idea um both cryotherapy and tarragon it's actually really good um but they serve different functions so in terms of cryotherapy i think that generally it just helps you to flush out all these um toxins in the body basically what it does what it does is that it causes the body to have um, a temporary blood flow, like increased blood flow to a certain area or improved blood circulation, if you can put it. So we know that mm -hmm. our job is generally there is um, 
lesser blood circulations around the, around the region. That's why people who injure the knees, for example, or some part of the joint, it takes a longer time for them to heal because the, the blood vessels around the region is much lesser compared to certain other areas. So when you have cryotherapy, what it does is that it causes more blood to flow into the area, hence more nutrients will be carried to that area to help repairing. Hence why cryotherapy is actually pretty good um, in my perspective or based on what I understand. So in terms of tarragon, it serves a different function though. So I don't know, Jacob, have you have you prepared a chicken on your own before? Like buy a chicken, cut it on your own? I'm sure you've done oh, it before. Wow, I mean... <laughs> like the no. one from... Yeah, yeah, a, a whole a whole chicken, yeah, maybe like once or twice. Usually, honestly, I'm 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 guilty of usually just buying like skinless breasts and just cooking right. those. But sometimes, you know, I sometimes I'll take a whole chicken and I'll roast that and and, and prepare it right. and whatnot. Yeah. Okay, so if you've done it before, I'm sure that you know, like when you're preparing the chicken, you'll be able to see that if you want to peel off the skin in between the mm. skin, the chicken meat, there is a very thin sheet of um, membrane. I don't mm. know if. You it we call it we call that shit fascia so that fascia it's the same thing in our body we also have it like in the human structure so over the time when we are not being active when we're not stretching or we're not exercising that sheet of fascia will actually go tighter so what happens when this is getting really tight it's going to limit our movement uh, sometimes it can cause discomfort so this tarragon, what it does is that it actually helps stretches the fascia out. That's why the first few uh, times when you use it, it's quite painful. But the more you use it, it actually reduces the pain. You realize, oh, actually, it's not that painful because the fascia has been um, reduced. Uh, what do you call that? Uh, the tightness of the fascia is reduced and it's starting to get back to a normal, um, uh, what do you call that, tension. It's being optimized in a way. That's why it's not that painful and the range of movement will in increase and the performance in exercise will increase as well. That's what, you know, the foam roller that people do in the gym, it's actually the same sort of thing. It's just that they're using a different right. way to do it. Yeah, yes. yeah I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the, I don't use one as often as I should, but I'm a big fan of the foam roller. Um, yeah. Sometimes I just don't have patience for it, but it's. Uh, I used to have one, like a really hard plastic one with, uh, you know, different ridges and things in it. Oh, it was yeah. agony. But you knew that it was working almost, so yeah. Good questions. So, uh, uh, Forrest will actually works as a cryotherapist. Yeah, that's why. Uh, so, thumbs up to cryotherapy. Yeah, shout out to cryotherapy. Yeah, yeah. Cryotherapy is Thank you for this. Very interesting. Did you uh, did you manage to find your slides, Daniel, or or your what you wanted to show us, or do you want to take another question from the audience? I I think we, we can go another question first. Um, I I saw Josephine okay, sure. ask right. another question. Yeah. How do you think? Yeah. My car, my hubby was currently seeing her for back pain prior to MCO starting. Now the pain has come back, but we can't do the recovery yet. Okay. Um, so with with this kind of situation, I think Vince is uh, Forrest is probably gonna like this uh, answer. Um, one of the way that you can do it is actually use an ice pack. It's a form of cryotherapy. So, um, say if you do have a pain at the lower back or the neck, so what you want to do is to prepare an ice pack. So get a very thin towel wrap around the ice pack and then just put it at the area that which is painful so leave it there for 10 10 to 15 minutes morning and night so what it does is first thing it helps to repair second it helps to reduce the swelling um, you have to remember that the ice pack cannot directly contact on that on that area because if it's too cold it can actually damage area and um, if you leave it there for too long it might cause an inflammation as well so it has to be just about 10 to 15 minutes that will be a that will be the best ratio or the best timing. Um, try that first before he, he returns to the Cairo. Um, that will probably help. Mm. Okay, cool. There you go, Josephine. So grab a and so grab an ice pack, or if you don't have an ice pack, grab a packet of frozen peas from the freezer, and yeah. uh, get your husband get your husband sitting comfortably. Uh, and and, uh, and, and don't put, forget the basics of you know like trying to get the back supported nicely when you're sitting. Um, mm -hmm. Try to avoid stretching. Uh, a lot of people have this misconception of stretching is good, uh, especially when you're having back pain. Stretching generally is good, but not when you're having back pain because okay. you go, go to the shoulder situation again, right? If your shoulder is dislocated, uh, if the bone is not in the right position, if you try to stretch it, essentially what you're doing is that you're, bring, you're bringing the bone further away. 
So when you're bringing the bone further away, you're mm -hmm. causing more damage, especially when there is no professional um, that is supervising it. We wouldn't know what kind of stretching you're doing. So you're potentially making it worse. Hence sure, why the, sure, best sure. Thing, yeah, the best thing you can do is something similar to Terragun. So you try to, uh, uh, what do you call that? Stretch out the fascia. So for example, if you're having lower back issue, what you can do is that around this region, the whole lower back region, you can just mm -hmm. pressure here and just try to wrap it around the side here and just try to stretch out the fascia, that would help. But try not to move, okay. try not to push into the spinal area though, that's probably not gonna be a good idea. And a lot of people try to crack okay. on their own, that's also not a good idea. <laughs> You know, although I'm 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 really guilty of that, and I must admit it is very satisfying, but yeah. probably probably not good for me. Um, yeah. Okay, so so the the key then there is to so don't try and stretch it out too much, but but really kind of focus on the area itself and around the area, especially, and, and improve improve the circulation and blood flow to that area, so the body can heal a bit better, and also just gentle, gentle massage on the fascia to relieve and reduce the tension that's being caused, right? So yeah. don't try and like stretch yourself, don't, don't, don't try and crack yourself out or stretch yourself out too much, like just gently, gently, softly, softly. And then if, it's, if, it, if, it, if, it, if it continues, um, well, hopefully when, when the MCO is over, of course, go and see a chiropractor. Yeah. That's probably a good idea. Yes. Mm. Um, we have another good question actually here from 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 Forrest, who is asking um, and and relative uh, relevant, I guess, to, to to what I just mentioned about not being able to see a chiropractor, and and what Josephine just said about not being able to see a chiropractor due to MCO. Mm. So, I imagine you know, there's a lot of self diagnosis perhaps going on at home. Um, mm people and i think it's interesting how forrest mentions here whatsapp because you know we all know whatsapp can be a, a horrific source of fake news and viral you know misinformation shall we say even google either there's even a joke about looking up your symptoms on webmd like a runny nose might indicate cancer or something you know it's like so so there, there's a lot of information out there, but a lot of it could be misinformation. So where is that fine line to be drawn when you're self-diagnosing, when you maybe when maybe you can't immediately access the help that you need or, or the treatment that you require? Mm. Okay, um, I think the okay. So I think that there is a certain things that you can actually diagnose just from information. So by the pattern of um, Judging at the symptoms, say if someone, a patient comes in and describes to me, you know, like, oh, I've been having this pain, for example, there, there are some, there are some, sim, uh, there are some uh, uh, what do you call that? There are some highlights, right? Um, uh, uh, sorry, there are certain patterns that reflect that it is actually a nerve problem. So, for example, um, most of the patient comes in, Okay, especially if it's a referred pain, say if they have a knee pain, for example, if it's an actual knee pain, most of the time you need some sort of injury or some sort of impact that triggers the knee pain. Say if you have a fall that actually hit on the knee and the pain is consistent. Um, mm. But sometimes when patient comes in, they tell us that they have a knee pain, the pain sort of comes and goes, um, the lower back is affected as well, and the whole leg is sort of numb sometimes. So. A different, a different description of symptoms like this can actually help us as a practitioner to differentiate that you, you actually have a lower back issue or you have a knee issues. Um, so for example, if you have a back pain as well, if it's coming from the spine or if it's coming from the muscle, from some information we will be able to know as a practitioner and we, we will be able to give you some information. However, when it comes to a, an actual assessment, the reason why we always recommend people to go to the clinic is because we need people to, we need to have a, a hands-on assessment. Because when it comes to chiropractic, the word chiro, if you if you look it up, is defined is is defined as to do with to be done with hand. So what it means is that oh. there is a lot, yeah there is actually a lot of hands-on work here. We spend a lot of our, our time actually assessing and feeling for any swelling at the spine, a very subtle swelling. We, we spend a lot of time to practice to feel the movement of the joint. Mm -hmm. Just like how a nurse, they can actually feel the veins very quickly and they can actually, actually inject you very quickly. It's, it's a skill, just like a surgeon, how do you know exactly where to cut and how to, you know, it's, it's the same thing. So yeah. we spend a lot of time feeling for joint movement, what's normal, what's not normal. 
how a normal one should move, should move and whatnot. So that's what we do. Interesting. Yeah, I've always been in, in the, I, I've seen a couple of, uh, I mean, back in the UK, so this was over over four years ago now, I, I saw a chiropractor. And even, even back then, I was astounded at just the, even with a very quick look and a quick assessment and a very delicate, you know, he poked me and he prodded me for a little bit and then was able to diagnose like straight away what what the issue was like what what i've been doing wrong what i need to do to correct it so like you guys really do have the um the magic touch as it were so we'll give a quick shout out by the way so dr daniel is actually founder of the aligned clinic so give them a google down below and you can look them up so they'll be um you're not open at the minute i presume dr no, daniel, no. like no. waiting to the open. okay well no. So for now, guys, grab a packet of frozen peas and relieve the symptoms and pain as best as you can. But once the lockdown is lifted, check out the Aligned Clinic because um, I mean they have they have received a lot of excellent reviews. Um, I know that they're very popular with some friends of ours. So, and I, as as Dr. Lang just pointed out, there is right now we have no choice but to try and you know self-assess or diagnose, but. Try not to focus maybe too much on 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 what you're reading and just just look forward to being able to see and be treated by a professional because i mean your spine is not something to be risked with or to be risked or to be played with you know it, it is um it is a very very delicate part of in the most delicate almost you, you you might say part of the body so don't overdo it don't try and treat yourself especially if you think it's something chronic like Go and see a professional. And on that note, by the way, I'll just plug. I think we're um, we are hosting on our on our Facebook page on the A Life Group Facebook page. Um, you can actually purchase directly um, an assessment and consultation treatment from Dr. Daniel's clinic. So if you visit A Life Group Facebook page and click on the shop tab, you will find um, a link there to to. I think we're even giving you guys a discount, which is nice. So you'll find a slightly discounted um, uh, chiropractic review and assessment and analysis and treatment session with Dr. Daniel at the Aligned Clinic. So check that out if you think something really needs uh, really needs attention, professional attention. That is. Thanks, Jacob. <laughs> so it's the least we can. You, you, you've come, you've come back for us this week. It's the least we can do. Um, I think there is okay. Another question from Forrest. Uh, so thank you, Forrest, for 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 being. Um, for getting involved. Uh, this is specifically for parents with kids. Are they allowed to teach or correct kids' postures by themselves? And Ooh, if, and if, if not, why not? Interesting question. Mm. Um, okay, I think to this question, first the parents have to understand what is a good posture. Um, mm. a lot of, I notice a lot of parents, you know, like especially typical Asian parents, the first thing that they do when they see, you know, the, the child slouching is that they're mm. forced to be upright. The thing though is that uh, sometimes when when we look at a patient, um, even though they they seem to have some sort of like curves, uh, means that they, they, they look like they're slouching, but, you know, their spine is completely fine. And some people who have a straight spine, it's like they're really upright, you know, like when you look at them walking, you feel that they are, they have really good posture. Sometimes mm. they have the worst spine ever. Wow, interesting. Yeah. So the, the, the key lies onto this, right? When we examine the spine, what we want to know is that we want to see each and every segment if they're functioning normally. That's why when you come to the clinic, what we do as a chiropractor is that we actually check all of the bone and see if they're functioning fine. If you happen to go to some practitioner who just, um, or Tita Sensei, who just crack the whole spine without assessing, that's actually a really bad idea because when, when we say that your spine has problem, it doesn't have problem on um, all of the bone, it only has problem on one side of the Only a problem at one segment, if it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Time. So when you had a fall and injury, usually you just, you just injure a few segments and not the whole thing. So, and our spine, if you, if you look into, if you can Google on some pictures, you notice that our spine, they're generally not straight. That's because in our spine, there should be three curves. And the first curve, it comes from the neck. So it should, it should have a C-shaped curve. The second one is from the back. They should generally be some curve at the middle back. 
and the one the last one is at the lower back the spine should have some curve at the lower back so these three curves here serves a very important purpose to protect our spine and what happened is if you do have any issue or any pelvis issue in in um, specific let's go back to pelvis again you might have some spine which is overly curved you'll notice that it's exaggerated so some people you you see them from the side you can actually go like that right it's really hunching and some people from the side you can see that they are really straight so either way when they're exaggerated in either extreme when they're too too curvy or they're too straight they're generally not good for the spine because what it what it does is that you apply um you have too much pressure sorry you have uneven pressure distributed throughout the spine it makes sense yeah yeah, I understand. I, I think, I mean, then this this goes back to something we, uh, let me bring myself back. This goes back to something we talked about last week where. Um, the pelvis can affect the, the curves of the spine. That, yes, yeah, for sure, the pelvis, but also something else you mentioned briefly about how, like, you know, we all love to go, uh, even even in some hairdressers, you know, they'll crack your they'll crack your neck before, yeah. uh, before or after, just to relax you, whatever. Or, or even when it, when it comes to professional treatment, sometimes you were saying how if you have you know, pain on one side of the neck, the doctor will, will still crack your neck both ways, which is entirely the wrong thing to do. Even though it feel, even though you want it done because it feels like you know symmetry, it's you know you're just doing more damage to the to the side of the neck which is damaged. You know, so I think and and so what you've just said is is like that but you know, the spinal version i guess like it's pointless cracking the whole spine and, and causing pressure in different in in, in 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 the wrong area if really the issue is isolated and localized to a certain you know disc or vertebra so so yeah exercise and, and it goes back to your point earlier about self cracking um which i know we're, i'm really guilty of but you know so exercise caution and and um and don't try and you know do, there is not one big you know solution if you like necessarily with this you've got to be very very focused very very um, accurate with your treatment correct it's 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 actually really accurate to the point where you, you know like when you look and look at an adjustment if any of you have been to uh, have, have you know try to google an adjustment video you you know you notice that you know when it comes to an adjustment when we set up the patient you notice that the patient sometimes the head is tilting to one side and you know, before we adjust it, you know, like the patient is being tilted to one side, then we try to adjust it that way, right? For example. So all this tilting it actually it is actually part of the setup to get the bone to the right position for us to adjust it. And say for example, if you look at the spine here, even the part where we contact is very important as well. So if for example, by grossly looking at it, the patient is turning to one side. But if the patient, mm. the this hand's contact is at a different segment, you can actually move the bone in a very different movement entirely. Right, yes. Yeah, so, so it's actually a very specific thing as well. When we try to move the bone, we really have to make sure that we understand the vector, how we want to move the bone to a certain direction and where should we contact as well. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about, you know, like how all these barbers or hairdressers, they try to just crack the neck like that, not a good it's, idea. <laughs> it, it, I'll admit it feel it feels good. I'll admit, but it probably yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a very short. It's a very short. I think it's more of like almost like a placebo effect, you know, because it relieves a little bit of tension, you know, just in, initially. But then, like, you, like as you're saying, it's probably doing longer term. Um, yeah, it's straining the straining the tendon, perhaps, or it could be a whole range of different things. You're the expert. We've got Is a good question that you mentioned this, Jacob. Um, Sorry, just to just to um, respond to the statement that you mentioned just now, it's mm. actually so much of a placebo effect. The reason why you feel good is because there is a, a mechanism. There is mechanism that actually makes you feel good after you get a crack. So okay. think of it this way: um, when you have a wound, say if you have a flesh wound, you got cut. What is the natural instinct of us as a human? You try to want to scratch it. Is ah, it true. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, cuts do itch, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you just want to scratch it, but we all know that scratching it is not good. Mm. That's because when you try to scratch it, what it does is that it causes uh, a receptor. We call it a mechanical re mechanical receptors to be onset. So when this when this receptor is being triggered, what it does is that it will try to offset 
your pain perception. That's why temporarily you feel good. Same goes to the spine. Mm -hmm. If you have an issue when you try to crack it on your own or you went to just anyone who tried to crack it, if they do it wrongly, even they do it wrongly, temporarily you will feel good. But oh, okay. can it solve the problem or it will damage the problem? That's the question. Very, very delicate. Okay, I had no, I, that's very interesting. I had no idea. So even if you yeah. do it wrongly, the body's the biological, physiological response is still to make you feel some kind of relief and some kind Temporary, of pleasure. Exactly. Temporary. Interesting. Because we're, tem we're tempering with the nerve here, and the nerve is very, mm -hmm. it's very sensitive and it's very delicate. So any change in pressure will make you feel a, a big difference. Just like if you have a needle hooking your hand, just by removing slight pressure to it, you will feel that there is a tremendous pressure relief because the nerve is that sensitive. Yeah. So interesting interesting thank you for clearing that up uh, we have a we have a good question here um that just popped up from a mr malcolm who is um he's got recurring upper back in the neck area uh what would your advice be um does he need to see a chiro for readjustment or realignment or and, and what can he do in the meantime if uh, I to relieve the pain? Mm, okay um, I think for Malcolm, it, it, to answer your question, it depends on how long have you been having the issue. Um, like I said, if you've been having the issue, you know, reoccurring on and off for a few times, uh, uh, for a long time, it's better for you to just go to a Cairo and take a look with it, um, at least get it assessed. So many, many times when, I, um, when patients ask me a question like this, I always recommend them to go for an assessment, just like you go to a dentist for an assessment. Regardless if you want to get it treated or not, you, as a patient or as a consumer, you need to know what's happening to your body. So assessment and diagnosis is very important. But from my perspective, definitely, I think that anyone, if you haven't been to a chiropractor before, at some point of time, you would definitely need to go to a chiropractor just like a dentist. Because eventually you might have some, you might develop some issues over the past 20, 30 or 40 years. It's, impo it's impossible to say that, for example, you're 40 years old, you haven't been to a dentist before and you don't find any dental issue. That's almost impossible, right? <laughs> very true, very true. Yeah. Unless you're very lucky, but impossible. Yeah, and at the meantime, if you do have the pain, um, if it's upper back and the neck area, um, there is a couple of things you can do. Okay, so you have to understand that most of the time we spend our we do our activities with our back hunch, right? We're using computer or we're sitting, we're hunching forward. So what happens is that naturally we develop a lot of uh, tightness at the front part, the anterior part of our body. So what we want to do is to strengthen the back part of the muscle, the posterior part. Mm. There is a couple of exercises that you can actually do to, do, to improve on that. So the first thing, um, get a towel. I probably need a longer towel, but Okay, get a, get a longer towel. I want you to pull the towel, bring your hands up, pull the towel, and pull it back like that. So because we know that we can't access to the gym right now, that's the second best thing you can do. Let me show you, hold on. Okay, so you, you can get a resistant band if you have. If you don't have, just get a towel. So what you want to do, I'm gonna just move the screen up a bit higher so you guys can see me here. Okay, is that better? Yeah. Okay. okay. So what you can do, take the towel, bring it up. You have to make sure you pull it upward, yeah? So pull it up, keep your head straight, and then just pull it down that way. And bring it up. So if you do it correctly, you should feel that there is a big part of, um, you, you should feel that there is some tension going on at the middle back then. So what you're doing is essentially you're trying to strengthen the posterior part of the, uh, the, the muscle, which is your back muscle. At the same time, you're actually stretching out the chest muscle as well. So same thing. That's the first exercise you can do. Um, an easier version would be just pulling it and just generally try to bring it back this way. So pull it and then just try to bring it back as far back as you can while keeping your hips straight and then bring it forward as again. 
remember that try remember that you shouldn't force it forward like that. That's a really bad idea. So just keep it neutral like this. So okay. that's some of some of the things that you can do. Um obviously there is a lot more. Another exercise that you can do is to try to strengthen your um rotator cuff muscles. I'm sure that you guys heard of that a lot, especially people who exercise. So what you can mm -hmm. do <clears throat> okay. I want you to imagine this. Um, this actually requires me to sit on a sofa. Uh, let me try to do it for you. Okay. <laughs> so this has to be this. One. Okay. So get a bottle of water. Okay. You can start with a lighter water first. Um, lighter bottle first. Uh, as you progress, you can then. Get a heavier bottle if you want to, but always start with a normal 500 ml water. So you can lie down on your side like this, okay? Keep your elbow close to the body, and then just basically extend up like that. Bring it down, mm. extend up like that. Bring it down. So what it does is that this exercise actually helps you helps you to strengthen a muscle that helps you to stabilize the shoulder blade. So the shoulder blade is the the chicken uh, the what do you call that the the wings at the back we call it scapula. Mm. So that's also pretty helpful for you to sort of like strengthen the muscles to prevent yourself from aching a lot. Interesting, interesting. Mm. Okay, so something as simple as uh, something as simple as that can help us. So the rotator cuff obviously refers to the joint in the, yeah. the, the shoulder. Yeah. Okay, so the easiest cup here. Interesting. Okay, good tip. So for every, every, anybody at home. All you need is a water bottle and a couple of pillows. Lie on the sofa, which is always nice, mm -hmm. and just gently, uh, gently raise that bottle. We've yeah. got a, a good question here. So, uh, to, going back to the to the uh, to the point about cracking and whatnot, and how good it can feel. Uh, I think this is a. I can't show the username here, but I believe this is Mr. Andrew Wong. So, shout out to Andrew Wong. Um, talking about cracking some parts of our body, is it generally advisable? Uh, because it does always feel good after we do it. We all know. Um, but if not, how can we relieve the tension that we're feeling that we would usually address just by cracking it? What 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 can we do generally? Like sometimes you said stretching might not be a if it if it is if it's acute pain, then stretching definitely isn't a good idea. Mm -hmm. But what can we do to relieve or to ease or to mitigate the pain that we're feeling sometimes or the tension that we're feeling sometimes? Um, personally, I think that remember we talk about the um, relie relieving uh, what do you call that releasing the tension at the fascia. So using the yeah. um, what do you call uh, that yeah. the ice pack the and the, uh, yeah. the, the ice gun, yeah. Gun. I think I think that that would be the best course of action at the moment because um, I personally I'm not a big fan. Uh, a big advocate of using medicine because to me if you're taking penicillin or any painkillers it can actually cause more damage than good because you have to understand that pain is pain is a senses or it's a response from the body telling you that something is not right so right. pain prevents you to do a certain movement which can aggravate the problem correct uh, so if yes, you're taking, yeah. if yeah, you're your body's yeah if you're taking a lot of painkillers what it does is that it, it numbs your pain but at the same time it makes it much easier for you to injure yourself yeah Which, yeah you know, because, some, you, because people don't feel the pain right so they just continue to do whatever that, that is causing the pain to be aggravated yeah that's why i'm not kind of penicillin. um the best thing you can do is just ice it reduce swelling reduce the damage um you know and and just try to do exercises strengthening exercises and Basically, you can do um, some myofascial release as well, but that's that's like a whole whole new thing. Um, it's quite difficult for me to guide all of them. I'm actually doing some, um, I actually did some videos online as well, just to guide people through uh, with some exercise. Okay. Where, can, where, actually, can we, where can we do those? Are they on your Instagram? Uh, it's Which actually is. on my Facebook page. My on Instagram, Facebook. I do have some tips as well, so if you guys want to go and see it, you can go to my Facebook page and my Instagram. Yeah. We f we shared your Facebook page. Like, like yeah. remind me what it's called again. Is it? It's just uh, Daniel Tan Chiropractor. Am I right, Doctor Daniel? Yeah, correct. Something like that. 
Let me pull this up right now. Then you're the chiropractic okay. director. Good tip, good tip. Okay, interesting. So uh, we've got about, where are we? We've got about five minutes left or so, guys. So, um, uh, oh, okay, interesting question here again, again from Forrest, uh, going back to the, 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 the barber neck massage scenario thing. Um, is it possible that, you know, when they're giving you your complimentary uh, crack at the end of your shave, is it possible that they could do some serious damage to the point of dislocation? <laughs> I wouldn't go as far as a dislocation because if it's a dislocation, it will probably mean that it's very dangerous. And I'm sorry, it probably means that you're you're in some sort of serious issue. That okay, mm -hmm. when it comes to an one of the most um commonly discussed danger when it comes to a neck manipulation is that it can actually cause a stroke. But from what we understand, is it can only happen in a ratio of one one over one hundred thousand people that can ah, get okay. so, so the right. is minimal. We do have we do have um, cases before, uh, and one very recent, I think, in the past two or three years, that happened in in uh, Indonesia. One one patient actually got killed from one of these treatments. Wow. But, yeah, but do bear in mind that that's when that's when this eye massagers or this uh, practitioner, when they didn't do their homework, when they didn't take a full history, when they didn't assess, they just go on and do the adjustment. That's what happened because when it comes to the neck, this is the neck, right? Um, mm. You can see that other than these nerves here, there is also a, what do you call it, an artery over here, the red color one. Yeah. So the cerebral artery actually runs through here and the top, the top part of our neck, actually, this is the one that, um, oh. that helps our neck to rotate the most. But if you if you actually contact here and if you adjust it very forcefully or you adjust it in a very wrong way, you can actually ca cause an incision, like a cut over here. Oh. That can oh. actually cause you to have a stroke. But... Um, it is not likely, and even if you want to purposely do that to a person, it's very difficult. Um, so, mm. you know, like I said, that happens unless you really oh, had a you got me. You got my yeah. neck tingling a little bit. Yeah. So okay. So <clears throat> I guess the answer is like you know to, to cause like a dislocation, there would have to be some serious intention sure, to do it. Yeah. But nevertheless, it, you know, a barber who doesn't know what he's doing, and I imagine most barbers aren't also qualified chiropractors, you know, they probably shouldn't be cracking your neck as uh, as carefree as they are doing, as they seem to right now. Uh, you just you just mentioned um, uh, something just now, which, which ties into this next uh, question quite nicely from uh, Malcolm. So, Thai massages, are they advisable or can they cause injury? Um, Mm. Again, I think it goes back to the whole, the experience and the, uh, the training and whatnot, right? Yeah. Um, yes, I, I do think that it can it can sometimes cause an injury. I love a good massage, don't get me wrong. But generally, when I go to massages, I will always advise, um, I will always tell my masseur to give me a massage where first, stay away from my spine. It means I don't press along my spine. And second, try not to crack my back. Reason is because a lot of masseur because um, I'm not sure if it's because they they want to chase after the satisfaction of helping people or they just have mm. this perception of harder is better, right? Because because most people that go for massage regularly, they tend to have some sort of spine problem. That's why they go to go for massages because these are the people that doesn't understand that the the muscle spasm or the tightness that they're getting is actually coming from the spine. So naturally, what they think is that, oh, my muscle is really tight today. I had a long weekend. I have to go and massage and stretch it out. So that's actually tied down, same thing, square one to the spine problem. So then mm -hmm. actually, the, the spasm is getting worse. The worse, the worse spasm it is, the harder they want the muscle to, to stretch out the muscle, the harder they want the muscle to press. So, so it the, becomes a vicious cycle. Yeah, yeah and, and it's like a cascade because the more the muscle try to press hard, sometimes it can mm -hmm. then cause injury and... When most muscle can't even press in, they'll try to crack the bone, they'll try to step on it, they do a lot of funny things, right? So that's when all these issues yeah. happen. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, so so actually, like that's a very interesting point. It becomes a vicious cycle because people go to massages because they think, oh, I've got lots of tension and I need it released. But then the harder that the massage that the masseuse you know, does the treatment, it can it then 
might cause more inflammation and more tension and more injury. And the, but then, then the customer is like, oh, I need another massage to treat that. You know, they, they don't equate, they don't think that the massage could be part of the problem and they yeah. keep going back for more. Exactly. Yeah. So in that case then, so, so, and, and this is where again, you'd recommend like a proper chiropractic assessment to see where that swelling, where that problem, where that inflammation or whatever it is might be. Um, it's not just something that you can, it's not just something that you can go to Thai Odyssey and get massaged out, you know, if, if it's truly uh, something which is recurring or bugging you or chronic or acute, then yeah, definitely a, a proper assessment is the, um, is the way to go. Mm, just, just as a disclaimer though, like I'm, I'm not saying that massages is not good. Like personally, I would, I would still love to go for massages. It is comfortable and it is actually quite therapeutic if they are doing the right thing. So just just when you go go for it, because I'm um, when you're going for massages, my advice is ask them to stay away from your spine and ask them to stay away from cracking your spine. Mm, that seems yeah. about right. That seems yeah. pretty reasonable advice. I think stay yeah. away from cracking my spine. When you put yeah. it that way, yeah. as much as we all wanna, as much as we all, you know, we, we, we and I think again we touched on this last week. As much as we chase that big satisfying crack, sometimes it really isn't as satisfying think it is or at least it's doing a lot more damage than it is so all right so uh, i think uh that is that wraps us up nicely actually here daniel on, on about the hour mark so i think that is all about all the time we have um time for but thank you very much again for joining us like we said so we we put the link in the comments below the facebook video to the um to the special deal we're giving in in, in partnership with dr daniel on the uh, on the on the chiropractic assessment evaluation and treatment course a lot more information, of course, can be found on your website, which is down below at the Align Clinic, which is in Mid Valley, right? Is it in that area? In Mid Valley. So, yeah, in the Mid Valley Bankshire area. So, check it out if you're nearby. And even if you're not, make the trip. I'm sure it's worth it. In the meantime, check Dr. Daniel out on Instagram down below at Daniel LT underscore Cairo. And your Facebook page, if people just go to Facebook and Google, so Google if people just go to Facebook and search Daniel Tan Chiropractor, they will find you very easily. Yeah, should be easy. Excellent, should be easy, excellent. Well, look, thank you very much again for coming back, Dr. Lang. One of, again, always one of the most insightful and interesting talks we've had. Um, and I've learned a lot more. Um, I'm, I might even go and try out that water bottle exercise. I think my workout, they'll rotate a cuff on both sides. Try, I'll, I'll, try and avoid, uh, I'll try and avoid cracking my back by myself, but <laughs> oh, maybe, I'll, maybe, maybe I'll just see what I've got in the freezer. See if I can find a nice pack and, and relieve the tension that way instead. Yeah. Anyway, um, I appreciate all that all that question that you have from you as well. Yes. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for getting involved. Some good questions. Some intelligent questions. We have a very good audience actually for Alaf Connects. I must say, very engaged. Very. Uh, and they are, they ask like they ask the good questions. They really put our yeah, hosts on the spot, which I like. Yeah. Saves me doing it. All right, excellent. So I think we'll have to wrap up there, Danny. But thank you very much again for joining us. It's always been a it's it's always a pleasure. It's been a great talk once again, and we look forward to seeing you once this is all over. I think I'm I'm nearby Mid Valley myself, so I think I'll come and say hello and get this uh, get the spine of mine. All right. So for now, we'll say goodbye. Take care. Thank you again. Have a good day, and we'll see you hopefully soon when all this is when all this is over. Yeah. Bye. There we have it, Dr. Daniel Tan, founder of the Aligned Chiropractic Clinic with another interesting and insightful session on how we can treat back pain while we can't physically see a chiropractor during the lockdown period. I hope you all learned something from that and thank you all for getting involved with the questions. Uh, always great to hear from our audience. So that wraps up the first session of day four of ALAF Connects. We will be back at 3 p.m. where we welcome Daniel Virapin, the uh, music producer, who will be lifting, uh, lifting the curtain on life in the recording studio and showing us behind the scenes and also telling us how to set up a creative studio at home, which should be pretty interesting, and also sharing with us some insights on the creative process. Then at 6 p.m. we have another public speaking workshop with the wonderful Natalie Nice, who will be talking to us about uh, tips and uh, insights into, into confidence in public speaking before wrapping up the day with a very special guest from the UK at 9 p.m. Mr. Stephen Raman Hughes will be joining us for a live music night. So join us today, tune in, take care, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.